Nostalgia Radio is on the air. WOLD Nostalgia Radio presents classic old-time radio programs from radio's golden age, the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. If you would like to support this channel, then leave us a comment or hit the like button. Now, sit back and relax as we travel back in time to the golden age of radio. Soon you'll be able to walk into your Admiral dealer's store and confidently buy the style radio or radio phonograph you want. The selection of Admiral radios will be complete. There'll be radio phonographs with a famous Admiral exclusive features, slide away that makes loading and unloading your record changer so easy, and the foolproof Admiral automatic record changer. There'll be consoles and table models and newly designed cabinets of fine woods and modern plastics. There'll be farm sets and portables in many styles and sizes, including the popular Admiral Bantam, the camera type radio that operates on alternating current, direct current, or self-contained batteries. There'll be new electronic refinements and AM, FM, and shortwave reception. And now about television. Admiral's extensive research assures television receivers with true Admiral quality. So, whatever you want in radio, you'll find it in an Admiral, America's smart set. You can get a very good idea of what Admiral will offer if you'll write for a free copy of the new full-colored booklet entitled It's a Promise from Admiral. Just write your name and address on a penny postcard and mail it to Admiral in care of this radio station. That's all. Just your name and address mailed to Admiral at this station. horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. This is the story that tells how Toto once saved the Lone Ranger. Toto were riding westward across desolate country. They were looking at the tracks of a wagon train when suddenly a thin young man stepped from behind a big boulder. He held a rifle to his shoulder and shouted, Hey, Nino, I'll shoot. Oh, 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 that's it. Now get off those horses and don't try to reach for a gun. The Lone Ranger and Toto dismounted slowly. Easy, steady, big fellow. Then the masked man dropped his hand with lightning speed and fired from the hip. His bullet smashed the rifle and sent it flying from the young man's hands. Now raise your hands. Search him, Toto. See if he has any other weapons. Uh, I haven't. I should have known better than to try to hold up a masked outlaw. I'm not an outlaw. and You don't look like one. I'm not. I held you up because I hoped to find food in your saddlebags. What's your name? Wingate. Dave Wingate. What are you doing alone in country like this? I was with a wagon train. It passed here. Why did you leave the train? I was driven away. Why? I didn't do anything wrong. I was framed by Cap Sanders. Cap Sanders? He was hired as wagon master. Every night he posted guards to watch for dangerous redskins. Two Indian dangerous, but Crow Indian friendly. One of our best friends is chief of the Crow Indians who live north of here. Dave, I want to hear how you were framed, but first we'll prepare a meal. Oh, I'm near starved. <laughs> During the meal, Dave told about being on guard duty during a dark night when he saw two men sneaking beyond the circle of wagons. So I followed them. They met a third man, and I got close enough to hear their voices. One was Cap Sanders, and another the guide he'd hired. We called him Dakota Dick. The man they met was an Indian. Could you hear what was said? I was there only a minute, and then I sneezed. Cap Sanders and Dakota Dick rushed at me, grabbed me, and disarmed me. They were raving mad. Well, what about the Indian? He disappeared. Dakota Dick wanted to shoot me. But Sanders said that'd be hard to explain. He said he had a better way of getting rid of me. 
They took me to camp, roused the men, and accused me of sleeping on guard duty. I wonder why they wanted to get rid of you. I don't know. Unless they thought I overheard something they wanted kept secret. Did you? No. The Indian jabbered something I couldn't understand. And Sanders told him to mosey along. Mosey along? Yes. He said, mosey along, you Injun. Walk on. It sounded odd. That's why I remembered it. Oh. Maybe him talk Sioux Indian language. Maybe him say, mosey on, you Indian. Walk on. That's it. Sanders told the Indian to make an attack at a landmark known as Medicine Rock. Medicine Rock? The wagons are supposed to reach there tonight. And Sanders is working with two Indians to attack the pioneers. They must be warned. I'll try to overtake the wagons. You go with you? No, Toto. I'll make better time alone. You stay with Dave. Easy, steady, big fella. Monsilver! <laughs> Late afternoon, when the Lone Ranger overtook the train of covered wagons, he drew abreast of the first one in the line. Easy, Silver, easy. And shouted to the driver. Frisbee! Are you Jim Frisbee? Yes, I... Your mask! No time to explain the mask now. There may be an ambush ahead. Stop the wagons while I tell you about it. Stop the wagons! The wagons were halted at the foot of a long hill. Jim Frisbee and men from other wagons listened while the Lone Ranger told about the possible ambush at Medicine Rock in the valley ahead. It's just beyond that hill. You're within a couple of miles of the place. Two of our men rode ahead. If there's any sign of trouble, they'll come back and lead us over a different route. Otherwise, we'll go on as we planned. Are Cap Sanders and Dakota Dick the men who went ahead? Well, yes. Frisbee, if my information is correct, they're helping the Indians plan the ambush. Why, why would they do that? For money. If you people are massacred, they'll be able to take your cash and let the Indians have your horses and supplies. They're not crooks. I'm sure they are. I'd say you're the crook. What's your game? Yeah, what's the Lone Ranger realized when he heard the angry comments that he could never persuade the men to follow him over a different trail that would lead safely past the dangerous valley. Where'd you get your information? Nothing I might say would convince you that I've told the hey, truth. Hey, look! The top of the hill! Engines! They're show engines! They're in the war path. They're coming this way! Now you must fight. I'll help you. Form a circle! No yeah. man! As the Indians rode down the long hill, the Lone Ranger helped the pioneers quickly move the wagons into a tight circle. Then the gunfire started. The savages, who quickly outnumbered the pioneers, circled around the wagons, firing from the backs of their horses. The Lone Ranger fought at the side of Jim Frisbee. The first attack was driven off. The Indians withdrew to the hilltop. The Lone Ranger watched them through binoculars, then said, Frisbee, look through these glasses. You see Cap Sanders and Dakota Dick talking to the Indians. They're double-crossers. You were right about them. They double-crossed you, and they lied about Dave Wingate falling asleep at his post. How'd you know about Wingate? I met him on the trail. During the lull in battle, the Lone Ranger told how he had met Dave Wingate and learned of the attack. Then the Indians near the hilltop, out of gun range, showed signs of activity. They're starting another attack. We've used more than half our ammunition. Get set, boys. We'll go down fighting. Here they come. Every man inside the circle of wagons knew that the end was near. Make every shot count. The Indians knew it, too. They felt that victory was in their grasp when suddenly new war cries sounded from the north. Look over there. More Indians coming. Those are friendly Indians. They're members of a Crow tribe. You mean they're on our side? Yes. Tuttle's riding beside the chief. And there's Dave Wingate. Boys, we're saved. Never mind sparing the ammunition. Let them have it. Toto and his friends changed the tide of battle quickly. Many Indians went down. The others tried to flee, but they were hotly pursued by the crows. And it was easy to see that none would escape. That night, in the light of campfires... Jim Frisbee told the pioneers how Dave Wingate had been unfairly punished. And, man, I say every one of us owes his life to Dave. That's, That's right, right. Yeah, I didn't do anything. We owe our lives to Tonto and the Lone Ranger. I don't do that. All right. <laughs>